this, this is how my dog watches Doctor Who. She is very, very stupid. Welcome to season 20. Um, so, um, so it's Father's Day. Uh, happy, uh, happy, Father's happy Father's Day, Day to all the f fathers out there. Um, knowing that three people that watch these, I don't think there is one, unless my dad's watching, yeah, in which dad case. And your son. Yes, okay. So, um, I went out on uh, yesterday and I saw uh, Lee. And Lee is Hi, Lee. the best bassist in Sheffield, in my opinion. And he's bloody good. And we were talking about, uh, or I was talking about probably, because he was probably humouring me, because he's a very nice man, uh, about how rubbish time flight was. And I said, uh, oh, things going to pick up. And he said, oh, it's got some rubbish to come. And he did, you know, he cited a, he was quite right too, the, the particular episode he cited was um, not particularly well regarded. Look forward to that one. Lee, thanks for reminding me. Um, but this one, obviously, um, has a reputation. I'm not going to say what that reputation is because my wife's here. But she just made some very salient points. Uh, what were the salient points you made, Elizabeth? Um, my salient points were that I'd like another gin and tonic. Yes, we're, yes. And also, happy Father's Day. And also, uh, that it seems like an episode that had lots happening in it. Lots of peril and intrigue. But I'm just not sure what was happening <sighs> Because I still am a little bit confused. In an, in an unsatisfying way. Because I don't think Doctor Who... Um, well, sometimes when you watch things, you're like, ooh, what's going to happen next? Yeah. But I actually feel a little bit confused. Just like, right. okay, so what's everyone stressed about? Like the Doctor being recalled to Gallifrey. Like, ooh, it's never happened before. But if it was me and I was recalled <sighs> to Gallifrey and I were a Doctor... Oh, actually, I am a Doctor. Like I think I some of these things are true, doctor, yeah. If I was the Doctor, I was recalled, I'd be thinking... Ooh, interesting. I wonder what it will be. But he's automatically assumed that it's something terrible and right. he's gone on the defensive and is, like, fighting off guards. And I think, like, why? What's the history here that makes you think that you're in danger and these are your people? Um, and that all the stuff in Amsterdam, like, OK, someone's slightly turned into a zombie. It's Amsterdam. I'm in a hostel. It's probably a brothel. Who knows? <laughs> it's the drugs. So... Um, it's very tempting to sing New Amsterdam at this point by Elvis Costello, which is the New greatest Amsterdam. song. Which is the greatest song that contains Amsterdam in the title. Um, Elvis Costello got mentioned yesterday as well. Um, so let's do a quick Gallifrey check-in. So the last time we did anything Gallifrey would be, I think, the invasion of Thai? I think that's a long time ago. Um, well time, it's all relative. And we, we obviously had a, a bit of Guardian nonsense and Romana's been around, but it's been a long time since we've done uh, Time Lords. Time Lords seem to spend a life completely uh, immersed in uh, administration, don't they? It's all button pushing and just remedial clerk jobs. Yeah. Unless you wear the really, really big... Yeah. <laughs> hat things, in which case you get to sit around and have poor CSO like um, ringlet things come off your head. I loved the shadow that was projected. That was brilliant. As that's such, I mean, it's such a simple thing, but brilliant. The shadow that's projected by the Time Lord, you know, because obviously there's a bit of a who done it in here. Did you did you sense a who done it in this lib? Not really. The problem is I already know who's done it, and even if I didn't know who's done it, I'd know who's done it by the fact that it was quite obvious who's done it. But anyway, that's by the by. Um, so I slightly disagree, Lib. I think it's completely reasonable for the Doctor to be suspicious of the Time Lords because they generally are up to no good and nonsense. Time Lords are, are either incompetent or or rubbish, or the Doctor. Um, or really inherently evil, like the Master. But... Um, that I, I think it's fair for the Doctor to be suspicious. I also think that this is a story, this is a very strange story in so much as I obviously know this story well because I am a dyed-in-the-wool nerd, but Lib, my darling... Mm -hmm. You've stated you've got no sense what's going on. And I know you've seen every Doctor Who story up until this point, mm -hmm. yes? Right. I think that that speaks volumes. And we will talk about that more and in a, a bit. Lady. Oh, you're an exceptionally clever lady. Um, can I also just say, quickly, 
quite. I, I think Davidson's. I'm, I'm I'm warming to Davidson's performance, and it's hateful to say that after a season. My gosh, by this point with other doctors, I'm completely sort of dialed in. But I'm struggling with Davidson. I I am struggling with Davidson, and it's upsetting me somewhat. I don't want to struggle with Davidson. Um, I also want to say that uh, the two backpackers. Um, Colin, who's not coming, he won't be coming today or any other day. Don't get cross with the lady; she's just a nice Dutch woman. Your Try... friend turned into a zombie. Yeah, it's not her fault. Uh, is, I mean, is I, I, I'm not entirely buying into his performance, and this is increasingly a situation. I don't remember getting wound up by performances of actors in Doctor Who quite as much as I have done recently. I don't know why that is. Maybe Tom Baker just completely overwhelmed everything. And also, can I just say, out of nowhere and with no reason to say it, that Commander Maxill fella, he's an actor with a bit of charisma. <laughs> I think he may go far. Anyway, given this Father's Day, and I, um, I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying this. We're going to watch the next one now. But as was previously stated, I have a gin and tonic to make. The dog's woken up. See you in a bit. <laughs> 